The Hawaiian Islands is the most isolated land or group of islands on the entire planet Earth. It has the most endemic plants found nowhere else in the world. Over many million years, the isolation of Hawaii resulted in a native flora and fauna spectacular for their uniqueness. These plants were either brought by wind, water, or wings. Then there are canoe plants. These plants were introduced to the Hawaiian Islands by way of canoe as the Polynesians migrated from other parts of the Pacific. They are said to be indigenous to Hawaii and also found in other places without human intervention. Hawaii is one of the few places where endemics outnumber indigenous. You are in a coconut tree. It's probably the most useful tree in Polynesia. Um, we assume it was brought here by the Tahitians long ago, the Hawaii, and the coconuts were spread and used widely near the ocean areas and near water sources. Every part of the tree is useful from the leaf that can be woven into baskets and nets and uh, walls and mats to the nut which can be used to for food, for water, for milk, to, for, to make bowls from the shells, uh, from the fiber to make cordage, from the tree itself to make charcoal and wood and to make parts of uh, anything you would need. Um, it was like your home depot. Okay, so this is the Milo tree. One of the stories that's well known is that there was a milo tree outside of the hut of King Kamehameha. And um, these trees grow very well inside the coastlines. They are drought tolerant, salt tolerant, wind tolerant trees. Um, they were widely used to make jewelry and utensils and eating implements. It's very easy to carve. Um, it provides a very nice shade when grown and pruned properly. Uh, there's a cordage that could be made out of this tree as well, and a dye that was made from this tree. Um, I believe this tree was used all over Polynesia. The fruit is used as a curative for people with diabetes and all kinds of ailments and cancer. They take the ripe fruit and they actually uh, ferment it in a jar. And then they drink the juice, which is very bitter from that, in small amounts, as a kind of like a medicine to help you know, all kinds of problems. Stomach problems, colon problems, uh, blood sugar issues. Uh, most people are familiar with this. Uh, the green fruit is also used. You can use it like a foot scrub. You can cut it up leaf and put it into warm salt water and then use it to cut, cut it in half and you can scrub the foot with it. It helps return circulation to the feet and help with problems with circulation in the feet and anything to do with restoring balance to the foot area. The mature leaf can be dried and made into a tea. Uh, it also can be heated and used as a wrap to heal a sore muscle or a sprain. It can be made into a poultice and used to stop bleeding or to abate infection. So it's uh, a lot of uses to it. Also, the root of the plant um, is yellow in color and it provides a nice dye. Okay, so this is an Elima plant. And this is one of the self-starters on Kanewai Spring that appeared after the invasive uh, Koa Haole was removed and this plant spread it up on its own and has done very well with little or no care. Um, this was used in La Pa'au, the flower was used, but what I was taught, the flower and bud were used to treat stomach disorders, mostly if you uh, couldn't use the bathroom and you needed help. It was like a light laxative. I'm sure there's many other uses of the ilima, but it was widely sewn into a lei. Um, cultivated variety was sown into beautiful lays and uh, this hedge was growing in front of my mom's front uh, window. Uh, she had a nice hedge of this and uh, she collected the flowers and she distributed the seeds to people and uh, the very first bloom of the year we ate the bloom for good luck. Look how many bees are on God, 
Let's try and see if we can get some of that B action. Here we have the Ko'o Ko'o Lao, one of the 16 varieties that grow in Hawaii. The mountains down, some by the ocean. Um, Ko'o Ko'o Lao I use as a tea as well. It's good for managing blood pressure and blood sugar. Um, there are so many varieties of it and there is an introduced variety that many people mistake for our Ko'o Ko'o Lao. But again, the leaves and the buds are used. Here you see the leaves. And I collect the dried leaves or the green leaves and dry them. And then over here you see the flower and the bud. And it, I collect the seed to repropagate and I also use the flowers to make a tea. So when you make an infusion or a tea with the flower in the leaf, it's a little sticky and uh, kind of slimy and that actually helps your stomach. So uh, Ko'o Ko'o Lao is uh, widely marketed now along with Mamake and is used quite often for people who are trying to com control problems like high blood pressure and diabetes. Collected and dried and along with the leaf this is the little dried berry that grows on it that's dried with it as well. Some people say that mamake isn't any good unless it's harvested with this fruit on it but I think there's benefit either way with or without the fruit. The leaf is commonly used as a tea to help people manage diabetes and blood sugar and blood pressure. It's a manager of those things. Uh, Mamaki can make people who are nervous more nervous at night and cause sleeplessness. So it's not recommended for somebody who has high energy. Someone who's lethargic with low energy, this will help pick their energy level up. Um, <clears throat> also in the berry is the seed and it's often collected to repropagate the plant. Um, similar to the uhaloa, I would suggest collecting the leaf when it's in bloom with the berries and use the berries and the leaves together as it would be most beneficial. Um, it's a highly variable plant meaning it can look different in different areas where it grows but it's still widely available in the mountain and it's uh, grown and cultured by a lot of people for their own use just so that they can have a ready supply. So um, mamake or mamaki, uh, either way I learned it as mamake um, but both are correct. So there's no discrepancy on that. Mamake tea leaves. All right, aloha. This plant is called uhaloa, or as I like to refer to it, kanakaloa. <coughs> this plant is widely used by native Hawaiians for medicinal purposes. I can share with you some of the purposes I use it for. Um, I collect the leaves and dry them and make them into a tea. Um, it helps with uh, breathing disorders. If you have trouble breathing or you have uh, phlegm in your chest, this will help relieve it. Um, you can also use the bud, the budded flowers to make a tea as well. Um, it's a little more mild, but it has the same uh, effect. And it's very good for uh, young children. It's very mild, so it won't affect uh, the health of someone. Um, the seed is contained in these pods right here, these dried pods, as you can see. I put them in my hand. And if you look, the little brown parts inside there, that's the, the seed, the Uvaloa seed. And it's spread by the wind. It grows weedy like a clump, and most oftentimes people grow it in a pot because they want to be able to collect the herb somewhere where there isn't poison or it isn't getting uh, dirty from like exhaust or other things. Um, this particular bush I harvest from every three or four months. I cut it back and then let the leaves come out. They can be pretty long, four or five feet long, and when they start to bud and flower, that's when I collect them. Uh, at this point in time, when the plant has the flowering, I feel that's at its most effective. So not only do you have the leaves to use, but the dried bud material. And of course, I strip the stem. I don't use the stem. Although the root of this plant was used, and the juice of it was used and mixed with other plants to help with serious breathing disorders, it's very strong. The use of the, of the juice from the root should be done very cautiously. And my someone who knows how to use the plant. 
plant and knows the person taking the medicine. But if you don't know anything and you just want to use the tea, uh, the leaf for tea, you can. You don't have to dry it. Uh, when you dry it, it's stronger. When it's green, it's a little weaker and the taste is different, but it still has a similar effect. So you can use it green or dried. Uh, you can use the leaves or the buds. Um, Kanakaloa, Uhaloa, there it is.